The issue of supply chain has gained uh, more focus within the context of uh, uh, issues of justice, uh, issues of um, uh, de development, including uh, now as we look at uh, what can be the uh, risk factors and also the success factors in achieving the United Nations uh, 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and much more recently, the issue of uh, supply chain, uh, which is really the supply of goods and services um, uh, for various uh, programs, uh, uh, this has received uh, much more recently a greater focus in the equitable access to vaccines uh, against uh, the coronavirus to combat uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. So you play a very important role um, uh, in the sector. Uh, and uh, if things go wrong in the supply chain, not only lives are at risk, uh, but also the development of the current and future generations. So you play a very important role um, uh, and uh, we want to salute you. South Africa, the South African government considers also the supply chain and procurement profession and practice, not only as a prescription of standards of behavior, ethics and accountability uh, required uh, in the public service uh, and also in the practice, um, uh, practice of the private sector or behavior of the private sector. But um, it is also a statement uh, uh, the supply chain policies are a statement of government's commitment to a procurement system which enables the emergence of sustainable small, medium, and micro businesses, uh, which will add to the commonwealth of our country uh, and uh, also to the achievement of enhanced economic and social well being of South Africans. Uh, the South African constitution requires public procurement to be done in accordance with a system that is fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost-effective. Uh, uh, the remedies, uh, if uh, this is not done, can include the correction of breaches. So we need professionals to uh, run the system uh, and uh, we also need society to be alert so that uh, they oversee it, that uh, there are no breaches. Where they are, there has to be corrections. Uh, and sometimes a uh, compensation for loss or damages. And recently the Auditor General has been given uh, the authority uh, to identify the, those responsible for damages, for loss and um, ensure accountability. And part of the accountability could actually be that uh, the professionals who, who were sleeping on the job or who were not alert enough uh, or who made mistakes, uh, 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 not in line with the you know, general practice uh, to actually pay out of their own pocket to reimburse uh, the, the, the public uh, purse. So it is important that uh, uh, in the practice of your profession, you realize both the responsibility is that you have, but also um, the accountabilities that you have. And, um, a, and, and some of the remedies may, may actually uh, be limited to, to the cost um, of, the, of the tender uh, preparation because uh, preparing a tender uh, is quite costly and also a social protest um, and, uh, and legal um, challenges, uh, but by those that uh, have, um, uh, the rights or have been uh, um, uh, negatively affected uh, by a poor and unprofessional and or biased uh, procurement uh, systems. So it is important to acknowledge that uh, uh, you know, professional uh, and fair systems in procurement are key and important um, in sustaining our democracy in, in our country, but also uh, equity. Uh, uh, in, our, in our continent and also globally. And that's also why for, for Africa, we also talk about uh, uh, the illicit uh, financial flows. We need to understand uh, what happens when uh, there's trading and uh, why uh, 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 certain goods and services acquired uh, 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 very um, 
below um, the, the cost and uh, who suffers uh, uh, because of those practices. So it is a developmental and, 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 and an issue of justice, uh, uh, the issue of uh, supply chain and management of uh, procurement. Um, there are five pillars that are generally acceptable um, in uh, professionally managing a supply chain. Uh, and these are uh, ensuring that there's value for money. I won't go into that. I think you, you know best, except to share with you that uh, in uh, the uh, Department of Health and Housing, for instance, at some stage, uh, we had um, a cash flows of uh, about uh, 600 million rands on a monthly basis uh, to sustain the supply of medication, the supply of oxygen, of food to patients, uh, of cleaning material, all of these uh, that are important in uh, providing um, care. Uh, and uh, medical services uh, to, um, to the patients. And that really relates to making sure that uh, every cent is used um, judiciously uh, and efficiently so that we can reach more and more of those in need. So unnecessary costs and delays uh, are not, uh, 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 should not be tolerant, uh, toler tolerated, uh, the monitoring of supply chain arrangements. Actually, our supply chain process in the, in the department had gone to a point of when we approve the budget, we also say how much is going for procurement, what are we going to procure, when are we, and also to schedule how we're going to procure and um, uh, to make sure that uh, there are no um, unnecessary uh, delays. Secondly, uh, as I've indicated, um, the second pillar is open and effective competition. And uh, there are laws uh, to that effect and the observance of the provision of the preferential procurement policy um, is very key in this regard. Uh, in Gauteng, uh, the policy of uh, open tender uh, was adopted so that uh, all those that have tendered are able to see the whole movement through the value chain of the uh, of the procurement policies. And, and therefore it is important in this uh, instance that uh, uh, e-tendering uh, and e-supply chains uh, are prioritized um, to make sure that uh, everybody is able to say, yes, uh, the process was indeed uh, fair uh, and uh, open and, uh, and effective. Um, so digital uh, systems uh, and digital governance is key in this, in this regard. Uh, to also limit uh, the human errors uh, and uh, to, to gain uh, a, a trust, for people to gain trust. The third pillar is ethics and fair dealing. Um, uh, and it, it, uh, all parties must comply to ethical standards. Uh, we have also seen a huge concern and uh, uproar and protest uh, against um, uh, unethical um, uh, behavior and um, uh, in, the, in the area of, um, of procurement. And uh, this is one thing that uh, yourselves as uh, an organized uh, 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 you know, uh, professionals um, as platform that you need to have programs from training up to continued professional development on uh, the ethics uh, part of it. We need capable, ethical and also developmental leaders and, and professionals and practitioners in this area uh, to reduce um, uh, unscrupulous behavior in the area of both public and private sector. Even in the private sector, uh, if um, there is unethical behavior, you may end up uh, the shareholders requiring that uh, you reinvest uh, you reinvest them. So uh, we also in this area need to provide all assistance in eliminating fraud and corruption. Fraud and corruption steals, uh, not only from the institutions that uh, uh, we serve, but also from the public uh, and uh, from the future generations. Um, and, and, and we need to ensure that uh, uh, we cooperate with the law enforcement agencies and, and supply chain professionals would from time to time be called uh, to be uh, to lead evidence uh, in the, 
uh, prosecutions um, in these areas. And, uh, and, and I think uh, it is important that uh, uh, we also pause at this stage uh, to, to honor those uh, that have uh, stood uh, firm and uh, became dependable and loyal. And we know that sometimes it is at a huge personal sacrifice where you would be marginalized. So there's a need for solidarity. We must have a, a, a steel ring uh, around uh, those that are ethical and those that are honest so that we, they are fully protected. So the practice, the, the, the profession itself must get to that point where it protects those that are uh, pro practicing the profession as expected and uh, uh, be the custodian of uh, a high level of uh, ethical conduct uh, and, and integrity. And the issue, the fourth pillar is of accountability and reporting, uh, very, very important in this regard. Uh, and um, also in the, the various uh, uh, positions that I've been able to, to serve, uh, would find that if um, the uh, reporting uh, processes are not uh, diligently done, uh, it would be important, uh, it, it is impossible uh, to hold people accountability. And uh, individual uh, procurement officers are accountable to heads of procurement and to their clients for services they provide. And all people exercising procurement functions must have regard uh, to guidelines and, um, uh, and, and accountability. Uh, but uh, in this case, um, if uh, there is uh, also a lack of diligence uh, in this regard, uh, uh, people can be held accountable um, as uh, they, they must ensure that they provide uh, uh, they, they provide uh, plans, actions, and outcomes uh, that uh, ensures uh, answerability. Uh, the fifth, uh, which is uh, the, the, also an important one in the context of your theme, is that of equity. Uh, the, word of, uh, the word equity um, uh, uh, is, is very important in South Africa um, and also globally, with the rich getting richer and, and mainly leveraging on the um, the economy of, uh, of, of, of uh, procurement or the, the, the supply chain economy, whereas the poor uh, who may not be included uh, in they continue uh, to be poor. So in closing the gap between the poor um, uh, and, and the rich, in closing the gap uh, between uh, uh, injustices uh, in, uh, in development, it is important that the procurement officers and specialists and, and professionals assist us in making sure that uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, rent or this dollar or euro uh, of procurement helps uh, to promote um, uh, social um, uh, service providers uh, like cooperatives, um, uh, uh, like many NGOs that, they, that can provide services and many NGOs, uh, for instance, they run childcare facilities uh, they support um, programs that support uh, the uh, people living with disability and the vulnerable in society. So it is important that uh, uh, the, 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 the informal sector and the uh, NGO sector is uh, enabled to access the procurement funds in a fair and equitable manner. Unfortunately, in this area as well, if there is no transparency, we've seen in a number of uh, social uh, departments, also a lot of uh, 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 risks and uh, corruption. Uh, so we also in this area need uh, open and transparent and fair systems, uh, but uh, making sure that you don't make a big uh, business compete uh, with the, the other sectors. So we need to stratify uh, uh, so that we, we enable access. Uh, the issue of um, uh, the redress, which is a constitutional obligation, broad-based black economic empowerment uh, is, is also key. Uh, so I, I think those are the pillars that I want to leave with you. There's a lot of literature written around those, and there's a lot of policies in our country and also uh, globally uh, to ensure that indeed uh, there is uh, 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 the supply chain processes help uh, enhance uh, the achievement of a, a just and equitable society, and that will undermine poverty, uh, unemployment, and, and inequity 
uh, that uh, we are faced with. Uh, but uh, a fair and just uh, supply chain and uh, that are efficient will also enable uh, continents like ourselves, our region, uh, to enhance policies like uh, the, uh, the, the Af Africa Free Trade uh, Agreements, uh, policies that uh, enable women, empower women. Uh, for instance, with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, our government made available um, billions of friends uh, in uh, 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 guarantees uh, for banks to um, make uh, available um, uh, funds uh, for businesses. And we have seen that those were not accessible. Uh, we need uh, supply chain professionals to help um, also um, these, um, uh, those that are left behind uh, to be able to come mainstream uh, as such. I want to conclude by uh, 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 appreciating the role that uh, government plays as well uh, in uh, uh, enabling uh, legislation, uh, competitive uh, laws, uh, 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 and, and to ensure that there's, uh, there's fairness in competition in the private sector, but also those that supply to government uh, do so mindful that uh, we are vigilant. Um, and in this case, um, I want to um, uh, refer you to the single e exit price policy uh, of South Africa, which has uh, uh, enabled um, the country to reduce um, the cost of medicine uh, by even as say uh, high in some instances as uh, uh, as twenty five percent to reduce by about twenty five percent and this has enabled us to stretch uh, the available resources so that we reach more and more people uh, and uh, in uh, uh, the national health insurance policy. Uh, that uh, is now a bill in before parliament. Uh, the, um, uh, one of the objectives is to enable uh, not only risk pooling, uh, but also to use uh, the funds uh, in a manner of, uh, in a manner that is more efficient and effective uh, uh, because some of the goods, goods and services uh, that we procure have got public good characteristics in them and are not efficiently uh, pro uh, provided, uh, uh, provided in the free market uh, economy. And therefore uh, the government from time to time must come in and regulate uh, on behalf and in the interest of the public. Uh, that's really my story. And uh, I want to salute you for this initiative. And, uh, and I also want to remind you that if you want to go far as a leader, you go it by yourself, you go it alone. But if you want to go further, you take others with you.